Hi, everybody. You're listening to the Songwriters Across Texas podcast, where we get to know musicians by hearing their stories and introduce you to some of their music. I'm your host, Carl Anderson. We'll be broadcasting today from Arlen Studios in Austin, Texas, and my guest today is Kelly Green. It seems... It seems Kelly Green was destined to play music for a living. Growing up in the mountains of Georgia with a working musician for a father, she was given her first guitar at the age of six. Well, actually, her brother was given the guitar, and she took it from him, and he was promptly rewarded with a drum set. Now the two of them are in a band, Madam Radar, together, and Kelly is going to start us off with a song called Wings on Fire. Welcome, Kelly. How can this be true? I couldn't believe you Even if I wanted to I can barely trust myself How can I I, 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 Trust somebody else But like a moth I flutter the flame that guides me there I'm consumed by your light I try to look the other way but I'm drawn in and I can't escape tonight not tonight Let me smolder out If you can handle this desire I can eat and I can think And even when I dream it's always about you Guides me there, I'm consumed by your light. I try to look the other way, but I'm drawn in and I can't escape tonight. Not tonight. Kelly. Hi, Carl. That was wonderful. Great to have you here. Um, 
since we're songwriters across Texas and we're trying to talk about how people write their songs, I wonder what you were thinking when you wrote that one or when it came about. Yeah, I wrote that at the beginning of uh, quarantine. Mm. And uh, it was written for a friend of mine who's a very kind soul but tends to be taken advantage of. And uh, yeah, I just I wrote that song for her. I'll never tell anybody who it's for, but she knows. She does? Yeah. Well, that's good. Yeah, thank you. Let's talk about your family and, and, and how you came into this life, into the musical family and how just all that, what it was like to be in those woods. Because, you know, I've heard you tell the story a few times and it's really unique. Uh, my father was a musician, a lifelong musician since he was a kid. And his and name? His name's B.B. Lee. B.B. Lee. That's right. And uh, he lived in Florida when I was two to three years old. My brother was just born. My mom was working as a like an alcohol distributor um, for ABC Liquors, and she did that. And my dad really just was kind of fed up with the music scene in Florida. It was like, I really, I want to go someplace where stuff's happening. And back in the 90s, Atlanta was really popping, especially mm-hmm. for blues musicians. Mm-hmm. And my father's uh, a, a blues musician. I guess he grew up, you know, listening to like Stevie Ray Vaughan and stuff. He was right. really inspired by that. So he uh, went to Atlanta, but instead of moving to the city, they ended up finding this property like an hour north of Atlanta. Right. 40 acres in the middle of nowhere. There were no roads, no running water, no electricity. And my dad was like, you know what, let's do this. So he brought my brother and I up while my mom kind of finished squaring stuff away. And uh, we lived in a tent for a year and a half while we built roads and built a house. And That's so incredible to think about, you know, no running water. Things you take for granted, for sure. Right. But you guys didn't really know any different? No, I had no clue. You know, you, you don't think about that kind of stuff, but... Uh, until you invite somebody over and they're like, oh, wait, this you have a toilet in the house, but it doesn't flush. You have to, like, put water into it or right. you go to an outhouse, you know. So it was, like, weird things like that that, you know, you just – as we were building, that that's what we had available until wells were, um, you know, dug and stuff like that. But right. We used to, uh, like, shower. You'd have to carry water from, like, a creek, heat it up on a fire, and then put it in a bucket, and you had, like – that much running water that's, you know <laughs> that's like the old school people cutting yeah. across the country you know yeah but the cool thing about that was that we got to use our imagination mm. and uh when there's nothing to do and there's no power an acoustic guitar is all the entertainment you need i was gonna say i've never heard you say anything talk wonderfully about it like it wasn't like you were like oh i'm out in the woods with all this and we're dirty it was like no you just... no it was the greatest life ever it was filled with love and community and uh a very safe place to grow up. And there was always music because your dad was playing and That's his friends right. were probably playing. That's right. And you immediately wanted to be a part of it. As soon as well, my did. dad was my hero. He was the coolest person I had ever met, and I, I wanted to be like him. And he was always playing his guitar, so if you wanted his attention, you know. You're right. Like, <laughs> so when he gave it to Cody, your younger brother. Yeah, I think uh, that was that was his boy. He was like, yeah, we're going to be guitar players. That's what we're going to do. And I was like, no. <laughs> I'm going to be the guitar player. <laughs> do you remember Do you remember the moment? Oh, I remember, yeah. It was Christmas, and I knew what it was. I mean, you, it's hard to wrap a guitar up and it not look like a guitar, and I knew. And he gave it to my brother, and I was like, what? Like, he's younger than me. Like, I'm, I get to pick what instrument I get to play first. And, right. Uh, luckily, my brother's really cool, and he, you know, he had no attachment to it at all. So he was, you know, my dad was like, well, here's a drum set. <laughs> and he got, what is that, with the Red Pearl? Yeah, Pearl World Series, <laughs> <Wow>. too. <laughs> But it's I I I the part about that story I love the most is that you thought that was yours and that was your birthright. Oh yeah, that was like my destiny. You took it and it, made it your birthright. You see, you know, you see a guitar and it's just like, ah, like that's me. So once you had that guitar and and it was all worked out with Cody and he was cool and he got his drum set and everyone's like, okay, Kelly, go on. How how did you start to approach playing? Yeah, well. Uh, I was, I just begged my dad, I was like, teach me anything, teach me something. And he taught me three chords and uh, it was like a G, a C and an F. And he's like, look, these are really easy to move between. Mm-hmm. He's like, I can teach this part to a monkey. So if you want to learn something past this, te- like play 10 different songs using these same chords and make them sound different. And that to me was really an interesting concept because I could have just kept learning chords, but then never really learn how to voice a different opinion Hmm. you know or it's it's like learning vocabulary but in rhythm for sure yeah and so that's one of the greatest pieces of advice that he 
kind of instilled in me in such a young age was yeah. like but right away that's so it's yeah. six well the other side is you Seven. don't need more than a couple chords but you, if you can get creative with them you can say a lot oh yeah for sure i mean there's the, you know we uh the smoking burnouts they three chords mostly and that's how they like it yeah you know? what do they say three chords in the truth three chords in the truth yeah. that's right exactly that's all you need um but so you were always did you ever put it down like it was it just from the time I was like six to 12, I was really into it. And then uh, about 12, I hit a plateau and got really bored and, and then kind of got into pop music. And mm -hmm. uh, I always wanted to be a singer, but it, it was it did not come easy to me. It was not a natural thing. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know why. It still like troubles me to this day. I'm like, I, I wish to be like such an incredible singer. And I hear these things in my head that my voice doesn't replicate. But like on guitar, that's that's where I feel... Like I can really, um, you know. I think shine. I think we hear our voices differently in our heads, and so when you hear them, especially on a microphone, maybe for the first time, you're like, "Ooh, do I?" You know, I've yeah. heard so many people say, "You yeah, see, I for really me, it was like, like I didn't care if I sounded bad; I was gonna do it." You know, it was like I just had such a passion for it that. Well, you don't sound bad. Oh, I'm I mean, learning. I'm learning. Well, you know what? I'm surrounded by some of the most talented people that you'll ever meet. Some That's of the most true. incredible singers, and I learn from all of them, and they all have different points of view with their voices and it it's just inspiring to see you know i think the thing is when you have passion it almost doesn't matter if it's good um if it's real and it comes from a place of truth and love and um you know and you guys got lucky because all four of you so madam Rayner, there's four of you um yeah violet uh leah who's been on our show you uh your brother cody and uh jace I never know how to say his last name. He doesn't go by his He's like Madonna. He's, oh, yeah. <laughs> he's just, he's just Jace. Yeah. Jace. <laughs> Jace. That's my man. Uh, the whole thing is delightful to me. I love I love you guys. But it's. I think what I was saying to Violet was that everybody's so talented and that nobody tries to just make it theirs. They just want everybody to do good. I think that's really unique. I think it's one of those things where um, we all have a light that shines, but when they're illuminating together, like it really draws attention. So yeah. I'm, I'm grateful to be surrounded by such incredibly talented people, and they're all very kind and uh, very hard workers. So and smart and talented too. Oh, yeah. yeah, witty, the whole, the funny. Whole, yeah, the whole, funny. Yeah, yeah, funny. You need funny. Oh yeah, we've been together for six years now, and uh, it gets better every year. I, uh, you know, I I met you guys. Uh, when you guys did the show for us back in 2019, yeah. and we, we filmed in the in the sound check, and uh, you were still the Texas KGB, and I thought you were great, and I hit it off with y'all. But over the last three years, since then, I mean, I think you guys have like you can tell that you play all the time, yeah. and that's how you get spectacular. Yeah. <laughs> but you also have another band called the Pack. That's right. And the pack plays over at the Saxon Pub for happy hours on Thursdays. And uh, it's wonderful. Five of you gals. Yes. Pack two A's. Group. That's right. P A A C K. <laughs> pack. Pack is one of those things that uh, I don't know how it exists or why I'm so lucky to be a part of it. But uh, it's truly changed my life uh, getting to hang out with such strong, uh, incredibly talented women. We uh, we started because Andrea and a friend of ours named Amanda Darnell um, had an idea to do this girl jam where they would just bring their friends in and kind of rotate through people and have a good time. And uh, one of the first weeks we did it, um, the lineup that is now exists, uh, we just played together and it was like we just were like, can we do this again? And can we do that again? And uh, we would just hang out and drink wine and eat cheese and drink more wine and then drink a little more wine and pop. Just maybe even open up one more bottle and have another bottle of wine. And sure. we really connected and uh, real, real friendship, you know. Do you all had, like, so since you all had your own bands and outlets and coming together, it was uh, everybody has songs and everybody's yes. talented and pack can play off of each other. Yeah, it's, it's really, I, I was always like one of those girls that hung out with guys was always in bands with guys right. and on the road with guys hanging out and it was just always I had a lot of masculine energy in my life and when I got to be around these women it was like oh my god like this is like nothing else and I tell you what these ladies are all like they get shit done like yeah. can I say the s word yeah. Th these yeah, ladies get stuff great. done yeah they get stuff done <laughs> they get uh, stuff done 
it, but it seemed I, I'm guessing because you guys really do have a great crowd. It, it, it and it must not have taken that long to get that because you already guys all had followings, well, right? It, that's the cool right thing is that it. you're you're drawing from five different or four different bands audiences, so they come together and it equals a really nice audience. But also, there's just something very special about it, and I think it's organically gained traction uh, because it's not like anything else that's really existed. It wasn't f- put together by people. It was just it happened to be and then right. once we realize when you it's one of those things that people look back and they're like oh i wonder if they knew it was special at the time and i know this is special because i could feel it the second that we were all together it was like wow this is i'm getting chills thinking about it it's like this is special yes. like this this kind of thing doesn't happen and when it does it's complicated and this isn't complicated this is it's so special. great that you're aware of that because I, when I was uh, the last time, which was just a couple of weeks ago, uh, I, I noticed Eddie Wilson, the great uh, own, you know owner of the Armadillo and all that, was out, and uh, Joe was out, and who yeah. owns the sax and you know and all that, and uh, my thought was, you know, these guys have been doing this forever, and they do not need to be here, and they would not be here. I don't think you know. I can't put words in their mouth. I <laughs> so, hope I'm right, guys. But, uh, <laughs> You know, I, but it was impressive to me. I was like, you know, they, they're they coming here for a reason. And, you know, the set goes quick. And uh, I, I I knew why they were there. Because <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> yeah, that's great. So we're going to do a, a second song. And we have a treat because Andrea McGee from the pack is here to do a song. And I believe she got a flute with her. I got chills too listening. I was like, oh, is there a ghost in here? Is the pack ghost here? Welcome, Andrea McGee. She's going to be playing a little flout on Kelly's song. What's the name of this song, Kelly? The song's called Don't Fade Away. Okay.
Yay! <laughs> I hit one bad note. I don't know if that matters. I didn't notice. Can we find a little backing vocals though? No. <laughs> yeah, that was gorgeous. I like that that little blend. Not only with the flute, but the backing vocals too. It's born. These are right? multi- I just get born when you do them. These are some multi-talented gals <laughs> right here, man. Do you hate hey, Andrea? Do you, do you like uh, traffic? Can you hear traffic? <laughs> oh. The, the, the band. band. <laughs> That's oh, of course I you were. Like, I hate traffic. I, <laughs> Great the, job. What about Jethro Tull? Yeah, I love Jethro Tull. That was great to to hear the flute in there with your song. She's so talented. She is now. Uh, you have talent around you, and you are too. So talent tracks talent. But for everybody that can do that and pitch in, uh, I got the backing vocals yeah. for this one. Is that how lovely is that? Oh man, I tell you, I just surround myself with people that are i mean in, in, in talented kind giving with their talents so um i feel so lucky yeah i i feel lucky to be sitting here frankly listening <laughs> to it <laughs> go back to the songwriting process so that song you just played for us yeah. um you know how did that come about and uh well i guess like that song i, I don't pull out with the band much i'll play it with pack um mm-hmm. But it's one of those songs that never really found a home in Madame Radar. Um, not that, it, I, I think we played it a couple times. We did a live stream uh, during quarantine for mm-hmm. like 66 weeks, and I would throw it in on some of the episodes of that. But uh, for the most part, I don't play that song super often because it's uh, very personal to me. Mm-hmm. It's uh, a song I wrote. I have a lot of people in my life that I love dearly, and uh, that, but they struggle with addiction, whether it's from alcohol or other substances. Mm-hmm. Um and uh, I'm always, I feel very committed to them and like I want to help see them through whatever they're going through. And, you know, you lend a hand, you lend an ear, you lend a dollar. And uh, you can only do that for so long before you realize like some people have their own decisions to make and it's not up to you how much you love them and how much you want to see them do well. Those are decisions that they have to make for themselves. Um, and that's why the the hook of the song says don't fade away because it's like, like I want you here, but when you do these things, like you're not the person that, mm-hmm. that I love. You're not the person I care about. You're this, I don't want to say monster because that's a very strong word, but a lot of times it does feel like a monster. It's very dark and uh, sad. And to watch people struggle like that really um, has affected me. And also in a way, maybe good because it, I love to party, but like I'm like a responsible partier. You know, it's like, I don't let today's party ruin tomorrow's party. <laughs> right. It, yeah, I, I hear you. But yeah, some some people, uh, they go away. Yeah. And then, uh, and then they can't work out the thing that makes them want to drink in the first place. And so they, they're hard to be around. Yeah. And unless you can get them when they're sober and go, look, man, you know, like I, I like, you know, I don't care whether you drink or not, but like, I like you better when you're not right now, yeah. you know, kind of thing. But that's like, that can be a very hard thing to do, too. Yeah, it's one of those things that uh, it's been a muse for me for a, long, a lot of my songs. I write a lot. Uh, I'm going to do another song in a minute about drinking also. It's just a, a theme in my life uh, that a lot of the people that I love dearly suffer with that. So, uh, But it's a double edged sword because it comes with your world. Yeah, you guys absolutely. have a whiskey sponsorship, absolutely, you know, and, the, and it's rock and roll. You know, it comes yeah. with a drink in its hand. Yeah, absolutely. That's so, how do you do that without letting it destroy you? That's a that's you know, a lot of people get destroyed by it, and yeah. some people have a good head on their shoulder. Yeah, for me, uh, music's always been my biggest addiction, and I'm just gonna let it kill me. <laughs> there you go. That's a good thing to die yeah. from. Yeah, there's worse things. <laughs> <laughs> do you have certain songs that are like that you? are you love or you hate or like that they, they, they're like more your favorites and some of them you're like I don't even like that song and then and then do your audience have a converse or oh my know. god yes there's songs that I never want to play again that people are like play that one I want to hear that one you're like we had a song I, I wrote welcome home I loved that song for so long but I just like I'm, it's one of those songs I'm like please don't make me ever play this again but it gets so many requests still to this don't day say that. I know it's just one of those songs and I think I'm gonna cry. If it's you never just play it's again. one of those songs that I'm like, oh yeah, it was okay. It was like a whatever, but people really love it, and so it's it's gonna stick around, and I'm sure I'll come back around to it. But you know how it is. It's like you write things in certain points of your life that later on, it's like, oh yeah, that's still true. But 
it's you know it's not making me feel at this moment so it's like I'll come back to it later and look on it and be like wow that was a part of my life but for right now I'm like oh but I have all these other things I want to say that's great because you you write a lot yeah yeah and until I write you know my free bird or whatever I have the option to continue just to keep throwing new stuff out there (laughs) well I think always but and then it you can you can put songs away for a little while and let people get get to the point where like yeah you better play that yeah welcome, right? welcome home is gonna be my mcrib you know <laughs> but it's funny because welcome home to me was like and you played it during our uh, during yeah. when we recorded the show and it became so, like it was one of the most powerful songs of the whole time 26 acts yeah, i was like this song you. the way it builds and uh it's very intricate and I, I thought it really depicted well what you guys could do together uh, but I get it. I mean, you play. Yeah, we, just, I always... we just played it a lot, you know. But I, I'm, I, like I said, I'll go back to it, and I, st- I still have love for it. But it's definitely one of those songs. I'm like, okay, like, you get to sit in the closet beside the other shoes, you know. <laughs> for sure, Tom Waits. Keep said, rewriting. <laughs> Tom Waits said he talked to his songs. He goes, sometimes I, you know, I talk to him, and uh, I was like, hey, you little punk, uh, you gonna make something of <laughs> yourself, or you gonna have to get going? He goes, sometimes they listen, sometimes they don't. Yeah, that's true. Do you treat that? Do you treat your? How do you treat your writing process like uh, the way it comes to you? Do you chord it? Do you have? Do you sit down every day and 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 wait for it? How does it work? Every once in a while, I'll have like a a line or a melody come to my mind, and I'll just like put it in my phone. But um, that's more rare for me. Usually for me, I just sit down and I pick a chord that I haven't used in a minute to start. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it's a basic chord like a C or something, and I'm like. Oh man, and I'll I'll do a different strum, just pick a random thing, or maybe go to a chord that I don't know. It's like, oh, what is this weird thing? Oh, that sounded good together. And then all of a sudden, I'll get like one word or a phrase, and that's it. That's all I need. I just need that little intro, and sometimes that will end up being a chorus later, or you move it around. But as long as I can get started with that one line, it all just pieces together. Like to me, it almost feels like it's. If like, it's just falling from the sky, and if I can catch it in my bucket, then I get to keep it, you know? That's wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> you got a magical little way about you, Kelly. <laughs> I'm a weird man. <laughs> <laughs> Grew up in the mountains. I do things different. Yeah. <laughs> Listen to the wind. <laughs> um, so uh, what about uh, you, 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 the Madam Radar is going to be released soon, and what are you guys plans uh, do you have any plans coming up for you know after the release and are you going to hit the road is yeah it... we are hitting the road okay. i'm super excited we just added a bunch of dates in new york and new jersey and then uh, we're going to head down to florida and then up to georgia great try to hit nashville and like arkansas and then we're working on some stuff out in arizona right now too so have you been out there all i mean you've we, obviously i've been to a handful of all these places or I've been through them, but um, we're going to a bunch of places that I've never played before, so oh, cool. I'm excited. Yeah, That's we're going to get a little travel trailer so I can bring my dogs on the road. and Nice. It's going to be a good time. That is going to be a good time. Yeah. When exactly is the record coming out? I believe uh, it's going to be the end of July. Right now we're aiming for July 30th. Mm-hmm. We are confirming venues this week, and uh, the new album's going to be called Speaks. It's 10 songs, nine original, and we did a cover of Radar Love because that's like our theme song. It turned out I've so, you guys play so cool. I was, uh, I don't always, I don't always encourage covers, uh, but I, I'm just from over the times listening to y'all and you would drop a song and I'd go, man, you guys could get away with that because you can really arrange them. Yeah, you know what, well, but own. for us, it's like you hear a song, you're like, oh, I kind of want to do that, and then you don't really learn the way they do it. You just play what you hear, and then it comes out kind of being your own. <laughs> it's right. and then But then you look back and you go, every band ever that I love, and that's amazing. Hey, man, if it's good the enough be- for Willie, it's good enough for me. it's good enough, good for, enough for the Beatles, who started with covers, you know. But, well, that's the thing. The, the Stones, Stuff all that of them. inspires you, like, other people don't necessarily get to hear that. Like I grew up on music from the seventies. My dad was a big rocker. My mom loves music so much and she has great taste in music. And she was always like playing these things for me that I was like, wow, that is so cool. What is this? What is this? And for me, I'm like, other people may never get to hear that, especially as young kids like come up, they're not going to grow up on the stuff I grew up on. So if I get to share a little piece of what inspired me. I think that's so cool. Absolutely. Yeah. Was there anything uh, from the upbringing, the, the sort of the Georgia upbringing that uh, 
there's a specific kind of music that comes from there that got into your system? Um, the Al- the Almond Brothers really inspired me. Nice. Uh, I have a, a big Southern rock influence, but uh, yeah, uh, I don't know. There's a lot of uh, guitar pickers, and I, that's something that I don't do, but um, I definitely steal a little bit of of uh, like in Georgia. There's a lot. There's a guy named Nathan Nelson or a guy named Bill Sheffield, and they're really great players. And they just they don't use a pick. Uh, they'll just like finger pick, but they keep like the bass going with their thumb and then do solos they're basically like one one man band you know and but it sounds like there's three or four people doing stuff and that was always really cool to me is andrea gonna do another one with you or is you just you gonna do another one i I think i'm just gonna do another one but i'm like i'm gonna hire her for everything (laughs) she's like if sunshine was a person (laughs) well we got time for one more kelly uh do you have another song for us i'll do anything for you carl oh all right, this song's called Down a Little More. This is a new song. I just wrote this one. Brand new, Down a Little More, That's ladies right. and gentlemen. Kelly Green. Oh, you make her crazy. Make her wild. Just spell me. 
brand new one yeah. from Kelly Green. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Carl. Thank you, songers across Texas. Thank you, Austin. If you've listened to this podcast but would like to see it, go over to the Songwriters Across Texas YouTube page and check it out. Kelly, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me, Carl. Carl.